That's one, two. Can you hear me? Yep. Hear me in the back? Raise your hand if you can't hear me. <laughs> Jim can't hear me. Raise your hand if you want me to lower it so you can take a nap. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Morning. 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 There's a lot of people here today. I see the people online don't know that I'm sure they're big, big crowd. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Maybe that's why a bunch of folks aren't here. They're all superstitious. Ooh, 13. That number. That hurts. There's the last big vacation before school year. That's probably more likely. So, glad you're able to join us this morning. We are also going to have our backpack blessing this week. So if uh, people are not able to join us right now, they can uh, join us later online and watch the live stream and uh, be blessed for that as well. And Miles and Meryl are like, oh man, I could be sleeping right now. <laughs> so, um, well, welcome. So, service, like I said, is going to be a little bit different this week. Uh, and then next week, uh, it'll be back to something more, uh, more normal, um, but we'll have Bud leading our service. Uh, instead of me, so he's graciously agreed to, to lead services next week uh, while I'm on vacation with the family uh, for a fundraiser. So, uh, thank you to Bud for that. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, I invite you to keep the family of Evelyn Bowman in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, her funeral service was yesterday, um, so you keep that family in our thoughts. Uh, as they begin traveling back home um, today and tomorrow, uh, back to Milwaukee. So uh, keep them in your prayers. Um, and also, uh, just to. All right. I had a thought and it just went. <laughs> It'll come back to me later. So. Um, any other announcements before we begin to <coughs> the training in October if anybody wants to work with it, Thank you. Response yes. from the church. Uh, so October 14th and 15th, uh, the Synod is putting on um, anti-racism training, uh, specifically for uh, lay folks. Uh, so the all the roster ministers have uh, anti any bias training this year, um, boundaries last year, so anti-racism will be next year. Um, every year we have some sort of um, training. Um, so this is specifically for late folk. Um, it's $50, and the October 14th session, um, both of them are nine to four. Um, October 14th will be here at Wilderness. So there's more information on Facebook, on the uh, event page, as well as on the, the Synod's uh, website, ecsw.org, um, or just ask um, Greg or myself, and we can direct you to that. So uh, if you're interested in uh, anti-racism training, uh, or if you need training for, for work or whatever, um, be a Close drive to uh, be able to get that filled. So, and we'll talk, if I haven't talked to Tomfrey, I think we might be able to do something with the uh, with the PRP too. Um, and that reminds me. Um, also, our council is discussing um, working on intentional welcoming uh, and uh, intentional work. To include youth uh, into our mindset uh, in leading the church. Um, so there is a book study uh, starting in September um, that will go through um, December. Um, and if, if you would be interested in participating in that, uh, please let me know. We can get you a copy of the book. So. 
any other announcements? If not, I invite the congregation to stand for our call to worship. Calling all children of the living God, the gospel is good news for every age and every stage. Let us worship together, the young and the old. The good news is proclaimed in God's words, and also with crayons, silly songs, snacks, and rest time. Let us worship together every generation. We come together with different abilities and disabilities, learning in a rainbow of ways and styles. Let us worship together with our family of faith. All are welcome in the arms of Christ, who proclaimed, Let the children come. Let us worship together, united in our eternal world. We sing together our gathering song, Lift High the Cross, number 377 in our green hymnals. us to understand the world around us. Thank you for the privilege of education. You have blessed our communities with teachers who take new skills and concepts and pass them along to each new class of young people. God who came as a child to show us how to be fully human, to show us how to be children of God. You have given our children minds that grow and develop in unique ways at unique speeds, and we are astounded by that miracle. 
and you speak to us through the words, actions, play, and feelings of children. You call us to listen to the Spirit speaking through our young siblings in Christ. We celebrate the beginning of this school year and ask for your blessings upon the children, the educators, and the families who support them all. But in the celebration of education and learning, we do not forget there are children and families and teachers who do not have the resources they need. When systems are unjust, the outcomes are unacceptable. Today we remember those who are beginning school this year, those who have what they need to learn and grow in safety, and those who lack supplies, teachers, safe buildings, and accommodations for all needs and abilities. We come to worship together, <clears throat> to lift up our young people and all those who care for them and teach them. Open our hearts to what you are saying to us today. Amen. May be seated for our readings. Do we have a volunteer for our first reading? I'll read. Okay, our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 to 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his way, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 1. Um, we'll read by full verse. Congregation reads the verses in full. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They rise in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on the conversation day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The second reading today is from Philemon, first uh, in the New Testament, the first chapter. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apia, our sister, to Herophilus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. 
For this reason, though, I am bold enough to Christ to command you to do your duty. Yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent. In order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason we have, we was he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but now much more to you, both in flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about you, your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. This is the reading. At this time, I'd like to invite all our children forward. Uh, we should have their backpacks blessed. Or if you're not a child, but have a backpack be blessed, come forward as well. Uh, if you are joining us online, I know we have folks uh, signed in uh, invite you to hold on your backpacks for this lesson. And then uh, for the questions that are asked, feel free to check those around you. I brought my own too. So. Fun things added on the sides. Maybe some hand sanitizer. Fun things like that. Yeah. All right. So with school starting or having already started, how are you feeling? Good. Are you excited? <laughs> some yes, some no. Some a little kind of. <laughs> Moss is ready. No. Are we feeling maybe nervous? No, no nervous. I'll share something with you. I've got some classes that I'm attending as a pastor. Oh, only like that. Oh, only like that. It's because it's easy to get the right answer, right? Well, some of my classes have me nervous. Because one, there's a lot of reading to get done in a short time. And I like to procrastinate. Anyone else like to procrastinate? Yeah. Another one that's really difficult stuff we're talking about 
racism and how, as a white guy, I have a lot of responsibilities to fight against racism in the world today. So that's not reading, but it's a lot of intellectual work and challenging the ways that I see the world and, and all that fun stuff. It's kind of scary, right? But there's other things that we're excited about, like math, right? things that we really like. We're getting to see our friends on a regular basis and learn new things. So, in order to celebrate all that, we have these tags over here. We have a couple different designs. This one says, you got this. Another one says, you are loved. And this one, funky design, it says, God's got your back. So those are good reminders for us when we're feeling not so great about school, when we're feeling kind of overwhelmed and stressed and worrying if we can do it all or worrying if we're strong enough mentally uh, for the, the work ahead of us, and that we're not doing this alone, but we have the support of God, we have the support of all those people out in the pews, all the loneliness rooting for you, and so we have a blessing, and we can color these, as we want to fix them up, uh, we got markers here, we can color them, and then after service, we can even get them laminated, and have little things on them like this, so you can attach them right to your backpack, and hopefully, you'll decorate a couple of them, so you can have one for your backpack, and then you can give some more. Does that sound kind of cool? Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll have those for the service. If you want to maybe take a couple and color them during service, parents, grandparents, may have my permission to color during service. You can as well. And then we've got a quick blessing for this as well. So, um, blessing is something that we receive from other people, right? Uh, it's a, a promise that is made. Um, so as I speak this blessing, <coughs> imagine that the words coming out of my mouth and dancing around, floating out. Um, and you can hold on to those words and receive them, and put them right in your heart, put them right in your back. So, may these tags remind you that God is always with you. As you sit, and as you stand, as you learn, and as you play. In every fear, and every celebration, may you know God, your friend, is always there with you. Alright. Alright. So, if you want to grab those crayons... We also have bubbles and Play-Doh after service. We'll wait until after service for those things. Um, we've got those that kind of give you up. We've got some pens here, too, if you want some extra pens for, for school uh, to share. So, um, go ahead and grab some of those markers and you can color during our service. So, thanks for coming out. I invite the congregation to rise as we sing our gospel affirmation.
Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. None of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Yikes. I guess we'll have to see how much money gets put in the offering plates today. In order to understand this reading this morning, we need to go back to the beginning. The first few words where it says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus. Why large crowds? What had, what had he done? Well, by Luke 14, the chapter that we're in today, Jesus has already cured several people of their ailments performed miracles. The voice of God was heard responding to Jesus, blessing him. So it makes sense that folks would say, hey, we should follow this guy, see what he's all about. He's doing really important things. He's probably going to go a lot of important places in his life, and if we go along with him, we can see parts of the world we never thought possible. Jesus knows this. He knows that good things attract a lot of people. that a miracle is going to result in crowds following. But Jesus needed more than that for his disciples. It's kind of like being a sports fan, right? With Packers obviously being the exception. But in a lot of sports teams, when they're doing really well, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I love this team. They're great. And then if they start losing games and not doing so well, or the players get caught in scandals, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I never cared for that team. No, no, no. Never liked them much. There's a lot of fair-weather fans out there. And the same is true in the church. See, it's easy to be a Christian when things are going really well. It's easy to 
give thanks to God for all that you have when you have a lot. But when you're struggling to make ends meet, <coughs> when people chastise you and criticize you and look down on you, it's not as easy to be bold in your declarations. When people see that you have no money and you say that all you have is from God, they start to snicker. And so it's difficult following Christ. A book that my grandmother gave me as I was discerning entering ministry helped shape that in my life. The book was Playboy to Priest, One Priest's Journey Through Life. Maybe some of you have read it. This young man considers entering the priesthood, and he talks with his priest about it. He says, well, I'm not the oldest sibling, so I'm probably not getting much of an inheritance, and there's not really much to do as far as work. These are hard times. Maybe they'll just enter the priesthood. And his priest tells him, don't go into ministry because that's the safe bet. Because it's the only option. Instead, I want you to go out and live your life, to be blessed with many things, and then ask yourself, you feel called to serve God. And so he gets a job on a steamboat, makes it up the ranks, gets lots of money and women and great things, riches. And then here's that call to ministry again. And in that moment, Jesus was asking him, now that you have all this money, the comfort of a decent job, riches, wonderful foods from all over the world to enjoy, do you still feel called to give it all up and follow Jesus? Because the road ahead as a Christian is not easy. It's just like any other relationship. There's that honeymoon phase where everything is wonderful and your partner is perfect. But after a while, you start to, start to notice those little things that maybe aren't so perfect about your partner. When do they start smacking their lips so loud? They always throw their socks at the foot of the bed? Oh my gosh, is that really what they look like when they wake up in the morning? Why are they so loud when I'm trying to sleep? Entering that phase of a relationship requires a lot more commitment. People are willing to work it out for the long haul. And that's what Jesus is looking for. He's not looking for disciples who are going to enjoy all the miracles and then bail for the next <coughs> miracle worker. He's looking for people that are willing to walk with him to the cross. They get their lives down in service to their neighbors. To live their lives to work honestly. To get back to the world. He offers the examples of building a tower and going to war. 
Because he's not just talking about building a tower, but building God's kingdom here on earth. He's not just talking about the war between two kingdoms, but the war between good and evil. He needs laborers that are willing to work for the kingdom. And soldiers that are willing to fight for the triumph of good in this world. Jesus asks us, are you truly willing to give all that you have and all that you are to God. Because God gave all that he had to us on his side. Amen. Now let us sing together our hymn of the day, Jesus Calls Us for the Truth. Number 494 in our LBWs. 494. appreciate the opportunity to learn and grow, knowing it is one of our biggest privileges we have. With thanks and love, we now offer everything we are to you, asking for your blessing. 
loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray as and for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope, fear and joy. We give you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady self-esteem and deepening resilience. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our minds, that they will expand in wonder and celebration, learning not just from the books studied, but the people beside us. Open our minds with a willingness to be chained in unexpected ways and settle our thought groups in peaceful places. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our hands, that they will reach out to help, welcome, and care. Bless these hands with patience and dedication as they grip pencils, type on keyboards, swish paintbrushes, and clap and song. Grip monkey bars and lunchbox handles, Spin wheelchair tires and basketballs. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our mouths, that they will speak words bringing life and connection. Help us use our words to honor the dignity and belovedness of all. Remind us to open our mouths for deep belly breaths when we're feeling anxious or afraid. Loving God, Hold us in our prayers. We pray for our feet, that they will move toward those different from us and help others in safe ways. Plant our feet next to those who feel alone and bless our steps down hallways and sidewalks. We know you are with us wherever our feet go. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our eyes, that they may see ourselves and others with compassion. Point our eyes toward those who are forgotten or struggling. Grow us in flexibility to see from all kinds of angles. Bless what and how we see, whether we're looking at a screen, a whiteboard, or the beauty of a person's face. And help us to see with the most important eyes, the eyes of the Spirit within us. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our ears, that they will genuinely listen to all voices, especially those that haven't been listened to much. When things get noisy, help us listen extra carefully for your voice. Help us hear with the most important ears, the ears of the Spirit within us. Loving God, Hold us in our prayers. We pray a special prayer for parents and grandparents as the start of a new school year is always another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love as they entrust their children and grandchildren and trust in you. When questions remain unanswered and the realm of control is finite, Bless them with peace and the promise you are right there with their children and grandchildren. When they're heading to preschool or driving to college. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We also pray for teachers, staff, and administrators. Bless these faithful servants with courage and confidence, knowing you are in their classroom with a steady hand on their shoulder. Give them peace, patience, and balance in the pressures they face, and bravery to build structures and systems which justly serve all your children. Give them delight in the young ones before them, and recognition of the sweet ways children are also teachers. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for health and wholeness, fun and growth surprise and amazement for this school year ahead. 
knowing you will hold us all the way through. We thank you, God, and love you. Amen. Now the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share signs of peace with those around you. God of all creation, all you've made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, to the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all peoples, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Children, families, and all who love them, go out into the beautiful world that God has made. Go and play, go and learn, go and love others. May you be filled with loving kindness for yourself and everyone around you. May the prayers of your faith community keep you safe, healthy, and full of joy. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn on our way of rejoicing. Number 260. Seemed appropriate. <laughs>